get to it. We got any requests? Let's well, first of let's uh, let's take a little uh, a, a little a little tour of what uh, what what what's on our plate. Kaboom! Review session for the final exam. 2021. All right, so we covered uh, mass moment of inertia, rigid body motion and Newton's second law, rigid body motion work energy, and rigid body motion impulse momentum and impacts. So those are the kind of problems that we could probably focus on. So here, if uh, you happen to be the equation sheet user, this is the section there where we have uh, mass moment of inertia. Well, first off, uh, we have uh, finding the center of mass, the mass moment of inertia, radius of gyration, parallel axis theorem. Uh, we have Newton's second law, but now we have like the sum of the moments equals the sum of the effective moments, the inertial moments. Um, we have a work energy where we now we have a moment times uh, the displacement of angle, angular displacement. And the kinetic energy is the combined um, um, translational kinetic energy and the um, rotational kinetic energy. And we could, if we wanted to, take it about a particular point. So we could actually combine them because the parallel axis theorem is kind of like falls out of that thing. It's inside. We have impulse and momentum. Now we have this angular uh, momentum to deal with I omega. And, uh, you know, we can have angular impulse, which is going to be a moment times uh, uh, time integrated across to, uh, usually very, very, very small amount of time, but it doesn't have to be a small amount of time. So there you go. There's um, sort of like the big picture of things. And if you have... Um, uh, on, on our collaborate recitation page here, we have exam practice problems. And somewhere in here, right there, final exam uh, practice problems. And I'm going to go ahead and release the solutions in case maybe your section hasn't released them yet. So um, here are some problems. Problems and problems and problems and we can work through some of these. It's up to you. We could take a vote. We could somebody could just shout out uh, a request, or we could take uh, problems somewhere else. We could leave these to be uh, stuff that you could do um, on your own uh, if you'd like um, in preparation uh, for the final exam. So, uh, anybody got any requests? Calling out the hits. Freebird. Anybody know that reference? If I go. Freebird, something old people do, right? Uh, uh, it's just a, like a running gag that when someone uh, like say, anybody got any requests? And somebody yells the Leonard Skinner song, Freebird. And it's funny because it's stupid. Can we request to cancel the final exam? You can absolutely request that. Absolutely. Um, not going to happen, but you can request it. Totally, to totally makes sense that you would request it. It's not a punishment, though, you know, this is just a uh, part of the uh, thing. So we got a uh, type of problem, a particular problem. What's the what's the problem you're most afraid of? You don't even know where to start. You just want me to pick one. All the problems, angular impulse. I hate an angular impulse is a pretty good one. Angular impulse. OK, so do I have an angular impulse problem? This is sort of an angular impulse problem. Uh, falls into that category. Um, any other? This is another impulse and momentum one. Um, here's an impulse and momentum one right here. Uh, boing thing. Yeah, so. Um, I actually, I think maybe this, this guy right uh, here, I think rod versus rod. This is an impulse and momentum one, right? So a slender rod, AB, is released from rest in the position shown. It swings down to a vertical position and strikes a second identical rod, CB, which is resting on a frictionless surface. Determine the coefficient of restitution between the rod, oh, you know the restitution, assuming it's 0.4. Determine the velocity of rod CD 
immediately after the impact, right? So uh, apparently we're not given uh, uh, values here. So this is going to be one of those where uh, we just come up with equations. My former coworker, Alicia Garcia, she, she probably took this problem. I, I don't know. It's, uh, this actually seems like it's out of a book. But uh, so let's... Let's try this thing out. Let's see how we started the thing out. So uh, turn the camera on and let's get to it. And uh, let me move this thing over to the other side. We can quit out of you and go to here. All right. So let's see. Um, well, the first thing uh, that I know that I'm going to need to do is do a little bit of work energy probably uh, coming up here. So we got this situation, and when he's down over to here, it's about to strike this other guy right here. So that's our scenario right in there. And while I'm uh, totally confident that I can uh, get the right answer, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, take a peekaboo. Oh, there it is. Okay, I lost page. Just All right. So um, we know the coefficient of restitution is 0.4, and we're not really given anything else. We're just given that that's L, and the thing starts off at L height right here, and this guy is also L, and I assume he's going to be the same mass, right? Uh, identical rod. Yes. Okay. So the same mass. So um, let's call this is called B and this is A. So uh, we could find uh, the moment of inertia uh, about it's, it's going to be a convenient for us to do it about B instead, right? So let's take it 1 12th ML squared, but that's just about the center. Let's make it about B. It's, just, it's a convenience. We know we can do it because it's pinned. So it's going to be L over 2 squared, right? So we use the parallel axis theorem. And let's use, make the moment of inertia up about there. So um, I could mess around with this uh, a long time by here. But we actually could look this up somewhere and find that it's simple enough that this ends up being 1 third ML squared. But I don't think you should just jump to that conclusion. But it might, unless it's in the book somewhere, it might actually be in the book. If I knew where my book was, we could look that up maybe because it's in the, uh, these things are, these conveniences. Although we are supposed to use the equation sheet, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we weren't supposed to use the equation sheet right there for a slender rod, it says to take it about this Z prime right there. It's one third ml squared. So be that as it may. All right. So um, let's do um, work energy first to figure out what the velocity of this thing is just before it's going to hit. So we say Ke1 plus Pe1 plus U1 to 2. It's going to be Ke2 plus Pe2 and uh, Ke1, 0. Pe1, it's going to be MgL, right? Because that's the height of the thing in the beginning. There is no external energy coming in or out of the thing. Ke2 is... Um, now, because it's a simplified because we did this right here, so we want to go I, B, omega 2 squared. And then PE2 is equal to 0 because we'll say that that's the datum right there. Well, well, I guess here is the datum right there. Um, so coming through this, 0 plus MGL plus zero is equal to one half I B omega two squared. Actually wouldn't kill us to put in 
this thing right here at the same time, one third ML squared omega two squared. So uh, we want to find omega two is our big goal here. Interestingly enough, the mass cancels out. One of the L's cancels out. And I am left with, uh, oh, I messed up. Right? This should be here to here, right? Big dummy. L over two is the height change of the center of gravity of the thing right there. Boom. Yeah, I'm glad I looked at the thing. All right. So, um, yeah, so one of the L's cancels out of, out of here. The, uh, it's actually the half cancels out of that right there. So we're left with the square root of three G over L. That's a good thing to know. And now for the angular impulse and momentum. I'm going to move this over to the side. That's my, my keyboard moving it over to the side. And now we have the um, angular imp mom. Um, I guess I will say that we have this situation. I like to try to be consistent if I can right there. Okay. So we have this thing coming on, which is going to be I B Omega two. And this is the before impulse after. Right uh, here we have earth shattering kaboom. We also have some other things that, uh, you know, have some weights and things like that. But it, uh, overall, everything, it, it, we can all ignore this thing. We just say, that, well, this is due to equal and opposite and also small magnitudes over a short amount of time, all different types uh, or equals and opposites, other things. We could say that we now believe that we're going to have conservation of angular momentum. But we want to think it through. That's the reason why we draw uh, the diagrams. So after the fact, we are going to have this. We have this I, B, omega 3 now. So that'll be the third stage. But now this thing is also moving with a um, M, V, uh, and I don't even know what to call him. Let's call him uh, C, D, 3. Right? He's got the same mass as him. So um, let's assume the conservation of angular momentum about B All right So we say I and um, do I want to I'll write it out first. All right so um, it, and we're saying that the, but we're defining counterclockwise as positive but that kind of helps but Everything was that direction anyway, so that's okay. So we have this initially, and that's going to end up equaling um, I B omega 3, and we're assuming it's going to keep on going. It, does, it might bounce off. We don't know yet. And, um, and then we have plus M V C D 3, but this is the linear momentum, and we need to have it about this point, so it's also going to be times L. And if we go ahead and we put in all the things we know here, we have the one-third ML squared, um, omega-2, which we can go ahead and uh, substitute is the square root of 3G over L. And this is one third ML squared. And here's something we don't know. We don't know omega three. 
And I wrote it in a stupid way, by the way, as, as I'm peeking over here and I'm looking at something I've written in the past and I want to slap myself, but that's okay. I used all the prime notation, which is just, I think it's confusing. And you go plus now we have the M V C D three L. One thing I can do here is, oh, I got a mass I can cancel out. Well, at least that's something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I might want to leave this for the time being. I can cancel out one of the L's if I wanted to. That might be nice. So I can cancel out that. I cancel out there. So there it goes. There's, there's, some, there's some convenience. Uh, but I'm going to leave this one intact for a second. So put a, put a pen in him. That's what old people say. Put a pen. And then we do the coefficient of restitution onto this thing. And we have to be careful. We have to make sure when we use the coefficient of restitution uh, that we're talking about the velocities at this these points right here, right? So there's the velocity at this point before the thing happens, and then there's the velocity at this point after these these points after these happen. It's uh, on this one that's going to be the same velocity as here as is the center of mass. That's fine. So what we essentially will say is it using kinematics or just a very small amount of kinematics that the velocity of and it, it, we, there I get okay it's going to be a we'll call it a right there so that's like the end of the thing is called a so that's going to the velocity of a is equal to omega l right there right so when we go to the coefficient of restitution remember that the definition of the thing is that it's the uh, uh, relative velocity afterwards, right? So the um, I'll say that it's going to be, uh, let's say, CD3 minus VA3 divided by, and you got you got to flip these guys over right here for the coefficient restitution. So this would be A2 minus VCD2 which we happen to know is zero, right? It started, this this thing started out as zero. So that kind of, that helps us out a little bit. So um, with our 0.4, we could say v, VA2, right? So uh, um, VA2 is omega 2L, and we know that that's going to be um, uh, square root of 3G over L times L, just double check in that I got that right, and so I can put that next to that point 0.4, can I, sure, I'll go L square root of 3G over L, All right, so I just took that, multiplied it by that, and that's going to be equal to my VCD3, minus my, uh, uh, we'll say that it's going to be omega 3L, All right? That's omega 3L. So I said, and I can barely read my own writing here, um, what I can do here is, um, yeah, I want omega three. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this together here so I can solve for omega three, and that's gonna get me uh, VCD because I'm I, my desired thing is to uh, determine the velocity of CD. So if I solve this for omega three, I get in terms of V uh, CD three. Um, and that gets me one step closer, and I can put him back up into this equation. And I'm running out of paper, so I'm going to have to go to a new sheet. So uh, this right here, we're swap these guys over. And so we have VCD3 over L minus 0.4. And that L can go away once we divide out through it. And then the square root of 3 g over l and at some point i might actually pull that three out 
I didn't yet, but I can pull that three out and multiply it by my 0.4. Yeah. Oh, and I actually posted my awful, awful solution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's ugly. All right, but um, must have been in a hurry at some point right there. Okay, so I can stick that back in uh, to this. Ooh, focus. And let's see. Putting him back into play. I can say that I have one third L square root three G over L equal to one third L, right? Cause I got rid of that, uh, omega three, but now I'm going to say that it's going to be V C D three over L minus 0.4 square root of 3g over l right there and uh put it there okay then plus v c d3 right sure so where'd you go mr calculator you're under a pile of stuff, aren't you? I'm so sorry. I apologize. Will you forgive me? So, um, what I can do from here, uh, I'm looking at my old stuff and, and to see uh, some of the things uh, that I took care of over right here. Um, I distributed the thing out. Let me write it again. One third L square root three G over L um, equals, and that's going to be one third. Uh, that L is going to cancel out, so that's going to be V C D three. Okay, and then minus my uh, point four um, L over three square root of three G over L plus VCD3. Okay, so bring that guy back over onto this side, and I have one-third plus 0.4 over 3, right? L square root of 3, sorry about that, um, G over L, is equal to um, this is just this one plus that one right so that's just four thirds VCD three um, and now I can uh, go ahead and finally uh, oh, there's, I think I lost an L somewhere I think that L was supposed to be gone yeah, uh, no, he was still there. He carried through over to here. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> a, a little trick. Damn, I hate the tricks. What we could do is we could square this, or if it had been squared, we could put it on uh, uh, into, the, into the inside and make it. So now we could go, uh, this is the square root, square of this, put this on the inside. And so now we have L squared on the inside, so we can multiply it by there. And uh, so, and, and, and also um, by way of this, let's take that square root of three um, out of the thing. Anyway, um, you can, work out the, uh, uh, the, 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 the values of this thing, but it ends up being 
uh, this. I hated these kinds of problems personally where we didn't actually come up with a number at the end, but we had to do uh, a bunch of monkey business with uh, changing the things out. But I had a lot of colleagues that uh, um, uh, kind of gravitate towards those types of problems. I just never kind of liked it myself. But uh, the, the, the long and the short of it is to uh, work through and think through uh, um, the, the process of trying to solve uh, the problems. All right. So um, we have, uh, uh, let's just take you to another problem. What, what it's, um, where did you guys go? Are you guys still there? You're still here, right? Oh, look, we have 11 people. Hello, everyone. Um, we got requests, calling out requests. I got problems from my book. See, I can look at this. This is from my book. Actually, it's not, it's really somebody else's problem, but I made this into a, a dynamics problem. It's a, it's a harder problem. It's too hard for an exam, by the way. It's a long problem because you have to do uh, acceleration analysis uh, as part of this. Um, yeah, I actually, the, this, this one was like a, a real puzzler for me at one point, but I figured it out. This is also a really long problem. It's also from my book. So this is a Newton's second law uh, problem. Here's another Newton's second law problem. There's another Newton's second law problem. Anybody got any uh, requests for ty types of problems here? Once again, let's go back to the beginning. Here's the um, he here's a sampling of things. We also uh, um, might want to consider doing a rigid body acceleration problem. So anybody want to call one out? Chat? Say, I would like to see anything you want me to pick. Mass moment of inertia. Okay. You got it. All right. So uh, we got a couple here, um, uh, you know, that, that are in, in this. So we got them right here. So here's a, uh, this is a very straightforward one um, where we have uh, just a T. Um, some of the, uh, so, so sometimes, you know, to, just to mix things up, uh, we give a density instead, um, on the problem. So that's what this one did. Uh, I didn't like this one. There's a picture frame, uh, type of thing. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's do this one right here. It's simple enough. Uh, but we want the location of the center of mass. And we want the mass moment inertia um, about the axis that goes through O right here. All right. Um, okay. So let me put him down. Where's you? Where am I doing? Here we go. Yeah. So let's go. All right, so uh, let's see how, how uh, that's not the best circle in the world. Uh, oh, I tried my best. We've got another opportunity here. Hmm. Did you ever see the episode of SpongeBob where um, uh, Squidward tries to teach him to draw and says, okay, draw a perfect circle, and, and SpongeBob draws like a really, really good circle, and it really upsets uh, um, Squidward? No. I haven't watched SpongeBob in a long time. I, I really I really should though. It's uh, really a lot of life's lessons you could really get from um, SpongeBob. My, my wife and I still make, make um, uh, comments about it all the time. I think the most recurring one is uh, going door to door selling chocolate and says an old woman old fish, I guess, comes to the door and, and he goes, is it, hello, young lady, is your mother home? And she screams, ma! And this really even older fish uh, comes out. She goes, chocolate! I remember chocolate! All right, so, okay, so the total mass is uh, two kilograms. We want to find out uh, the location. So we're going to call um, this part right here, we're going to call this part one. And this part that we're going to subtract, we're going to call him two. 
or her too. I didn't mean to uh, gender code um, the thing. And let's see here. I saw. Uh, so um, does it tell us the thickness of the thing? This is like one of the little games right here. Sometimes they don't tell us the thickness, but I guess we don't actually need uh, uh, the thickness um, of the piece. But sure, I kind of, my my way of thinking, I kind of wish uh, uh, we had it here. So anyway, uh, we make a little table is easiest to do uh, to find uh, the mass uh, when, when doing uh, these types of problems. We always have that kind of choice whether to make a ta uh, table or not, unless you're told to make a table. Um, so I'll write down the shape right here. And so shape one uh, right here. Uh, first, I'll put out what its radius is of the thing. So the shape's radius is, um, I'll go 0.2 meters, where shape 2 is uh, 0.075 meters. And uh, we'll, we'll use the area, right? We'll assume it's the same thickness uh, onto the thing. So finding the area of the thing is, of course, is just going to be equal to pi r squared. Um, so um, keep it in terms of pi. Why not? 0. 0.4, 0. 0.2 uh, squared is uh, 0. 0.04. Big dummy. 0. 0.04 pi. And then if we do the same thing down here, it gets really, 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 really small. But point zero zero five six to five pi and um uh, uh the mass of the thing let's see how do we decide that what the mass was going to be all right so the mass of each part would be well what we could say here okay so the the, the idea by trying to figure out what the mass is, is that the total area is going to be this minus that right there, right? So uh, the area total, let's just write this over to the side. This is just the thought process, is going to be 0 0.04 minus 0 0.005625, right? Pi. So uh, the area one is uh, um, of the thing, right? Let me see if I'm going to say uh, this uh, the right way, right? Okay, so I, actually I could have written this like right underneath here, uh, what that's equal to. Um, that's 0 0.04 minus that ends up being 0 0.034375 pi. So that's the that's the total one, right? Point zero three four three seven five pi and um so uh, uh the mass of part one is going to be the total mass times the area of one divided by the total area right there if that makes sense right so uh we're going to have um, two kilograms, two kilograms, uh, times, uh, um, 0 0.04 pi divided by 0 0.034375 pi. And this all seems like a, like a whole lot. Of, I, I didn't like this approach, but so I'm going to, I'm taking a detour here. 0 0.034375 uh, divided times 2. So that ends up being 2.327. Yes, okay. And uh, we can see that's kilograms. Therefore, the mass of two is obviously going to be that minus two, or 0.327. Um, there's another digit there, three. Um, so 2.327 and 0 0.3273. And then so we can have um, 
the distance from here is going to be zero right there right and the distance uh, from here to there is going to be um, uh, 0.1 right so um, our mass right so this distance maybe I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, 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 I'm I guess it was in the y direction so y i so this is going to be m i that's these are both m i y i so zero and um, total mass to be two kilograms right this thing should be minus that times that or 0 0.03273 so obviously it's minus 0 0.03273 right there so uh, the location um, of this thing by definition of the center of mass is going to be uh, the sum of all the masses divided by the sum of all the masses sorry the sum of all the masses times the distance of the thing there hopefully i didn't make that uh, um uh too complicated uh, uh to the thing but anyway um negative 0 0.03273 divided by two kilograms and so it's going to be a uh, minus really small number or 0. Point, wait a minute, I messed something up at some point here. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I never, there you go. There you go. Um, 0. 01636. And these are meters right there, right? So the answer that there is going to be negative 16.36 millimeters is where the Y bar is going to be. So that's the answer to part A is the location of the um, uh, center of this thing, right? Here, right. So it kind of makes sense that it's going to be below this, right? Because originally the center of just, you know, part one without a hole in it is right here. But if you remove something, that means the center of the mass is going to drop downwards. So we're saying that it dropped 16.36 uh, millimeters. Um, as for the uh, mass moment of inertia of the thing, uh, another table is uh, um, e easier to do, I think, than uh, to, to just do it by um, uh, writing out the equations for the thing. But we have the shape. And um, I'm just going to write out what the, uh, the this is, right? So the, the moment of inertia of the thing uh, for a circle, a circular piece, is or disc i should say is one half m r squared right so uh we're gonna have um the mass of this thing and we'll say it's one half m which we established was 2.327 and the r of the big guy is 0.2 squared And my colleague, Alicia Garcia, and her weird approach to things always bothered me. Uh, don't tell her. Shh. So I miss, I miss Alicia. She was fun. She was a fun person to work with. All right, so we got this guy, uh, what, one half, and here's a smaller number, 0.3273, and this one's much smaller. Point, uh, zero seven five squared. So this is we're going to have to use scientific notation here. Point three two seven three divided by two. Point zero seven five uh, squared um, times oh yeah nine point two zero five e to the minus four. Um, and now we need to shift both of these things 
to the new center of mass. No, 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 wait, 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 Do double checking something. What? Uh, the problem says, the oh, no, about, we're, we're trying to take it about O right here. Okay, so for one of them, we don't have to move this guy at all. This is the only one that's going to move. And some of the thing we have to think we have to consider uh, when we're doing it is what should we subtract? This one we need to subtract. Remember, this is going to be negative because is th this is like the full thing, but we're removing this. But this is at its center, so it needs to move to the main center to be able to uh, uh, to be able to subtract. So we want to have mass times the distance squared. Well, this one's going to be zero because it's we haven't moved it from its center, but we're going to move this one. But it is still it's going to still be negative, right? It's because it's what we, we want to kind of like you you want to kind of like picture it being two things, right? We're going to have this minus this to this right there, right? So, um, and they both need to be about this axis or about this uh, axis, I should say. Uh, in this case, uh, we're not doing it about this line. We're doing it about this center point because it's a rotation thing. But right now, what we have calculated is this is just the moment of inertia of this about the center. But now we want to move it back over here. So this one still needs to be negative. That's the conceptual part of the thing. So we take the, uh, uh, I'll even write the, mat, uh, the mass of the thing is uh, 0 0.3273. And the distance that we're going to move is actually this guy right here. So we're going to move him uh, 0 0.01636 squared. Um, and uh, so if we get what the value of that's going to be, um, we get, uh, oh, actually, I have it in my calculator still. Let's see. Uh, Flip that around. Yep, I got it right. Yep, not squared. 0.3273. Boom. So that's going to be a negative uh, 8.7641e to the minus 5 right here. So um, if I do this column right here and I take a look at this, I get uh, uh, 4.562. Uh, E to the minus two, right there, right. So the, it didn't it didn't eat into much of that right there. And then obviously, this is uh, uh, here. So if I just subtract that one out, I end up with my I of the whole thing is going to be equal to uh, four point five five three E to the minus two. And I got the wrong answer. Son of a, no, what, what? I did something wrong somewhere along the line. I don't know where it was. I don't like this problem. Especially since I didn't, didn't get the right answer. That makes me uh, especially mad at the thing. 64 divided by 1375 was her uh, uh, thing. And I got the same answer there. Okay. And then she got this right here. And then she says that this is 73 divided by 1600 for some reason. That's the same answer I got right there. This one over here, though, she gets 9 divided by 2750. And we get a different number. So not sure why we get a different number right here. Let me double check on this one. Um, I don't want to waste your time. So we want to uh, do another, start thinking about another problem. Think about another problem you want to do. I'm going to square this guy. And we're going to multiply him. Yeah, I think, uh, I think my number's right. And I think her number's wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm going with, man. This is the correct answer. I'm going to make a SOLIDWORKS model out of it later and figure it out. Double check it. But why don't we waste your time? Let's pick another problem, people. Pick another problem. Newton's second law. That sounds like a good one. I like that idea. Um, let's uh, pick from uh, the, let's see. 
Where'd you go? Newton second law. Uh, what's a good Newton second law problem? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Ah, let's use this one right now. Okay. So uh, we have this winch um, at A is trying to pull up this uh, drawbridge here. I guess I think there's only one, there's only one cable, yeah. And the initial acceleration at point B is one meter per second um, squared up. If the hinge is frictionless, use Newton's second law and, and find the determination, the, the, the tension in the cable and the vertical and horizontal forces on the pin. Woohoo, okay. So um, probably only one of the little quirks in here is that the thing is pinned there somehow. And um, I guess we're given that the thing coming up to this is like 30 degrees and the length is five meters and two meters. And anything, oh yeah, it's a mass is 1,000 kilograms. And uh, at this point B, acceleration of B is equal to uh, one meter per second squared up. So good thing to start to do. Well, one nice, one thing we could do, we have a kind of a, a, a we always have sort of an option here when this is a pinned problem right here. And this is the pin of it, O. Let's find the moment of inertia about O. So that's 1 12th ML squared um, plus, but there is the center right there of the thing. So we want to say um, M, and I'll just call it D squared right here. So we're going to shove numbers into this instead of playing the stupid uh, a game. So um, that's going to be 7 squared, right? 5 and 2. That's that's math. And then uh, 1,000. And the distance squared, let's see. What is that? That would be uh, 3.5 minus 2. So that would be 1.5. Is that right? Let's double check because, you know, relying on uh, my my uh, observational skills here is uh, uh, something we can't uh, came out. Oh, look at that. I didn't do it this way. That's okay. Um, I think it's going to be correct. So let me try it. Um, so we get 49 times 1,000 and divided by 12. All right. So I get the same thing I got before. And then uh, we get 1.5 squared, 1,000. So we can add them together and we get 6,333 kilogram meter squared. We didn't have to mess with slugs. Now um, I'm going to uh, uh, do my FBD and my IBD. And here's the tension into the thing. Here is the reaction forces, and here is the weight. So mg acting right there, and here's going to be r. There's going to be Roy and Rock's reaction. So any other forces? Any other forces? I don't think so. And then uh, for this one, we can draw it right here. If we go to mass times acceleration in the y direction, we also have I alpha, but you know, we, we don't want it. We don't have to use both of these things because we, uh, we took this about O, right? So when we go to write out our summation of the moments about O, we could say this is always true right there. That's a good idea. But in this special case, we can just take this right here because this I 
is already taking account of what's happening at the center of mass because we did it about the pin. Otherwise, we would also have to uh, include uh, this part right here, but we don't have to because we accounted for it with this. So uh, taking a look at here, we say, remember that the almost always do, are we doing the thing positive is counterclockwise. So this is going upwards. So we get a negative FT. And let's only take the vertical component of it. So the sine of theta and the uh, the distance. Well, actually, I don't have a symbol for the distance. Uh, that's right there. I guess I can go L O B if I wanted to. I don't know why I'm doing symbols, but that's okay. Um, and then plus M G and uh, I guess I, can, I don't know what the hell to call these things right here. I should just use numbers. I don't know why I did this, but it's okay. Um, uh, I could say, yeah, I'm just going to go L, uh, OG, original gangster. It's an OG. He's an OG. Uh, and nothing else. I'm going to be equal to um, I, O, alpha right there, right? So, um, okay, so we need to know this alpha. We were given the acceleration of uh, this right here. So we could have used uh, kinematics. That says kinematics, but like uh, in chicken scratch, that's a, a certain type of font, um, that chicken scratch. Um, I came up with it myself. Uh, we know that AB is going to be equal uh, to uh, uh, that length. OB times alpha right there, right? Because it's a pinned thing uh, that's taking place. So it's going up right here. So we could say that alpha is going to be AB divided by L OB, or in this case, it's going to be, um, I'm looking at something, one second. What, what, uh, it, what the hell is going on? It's going to be one divided by five, right? Can you explain again how to get the left side of that moment equation? I know it's F D. Okay. Um, well, it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, we, we're going to take the, we're taking the moment about right here. So it, it's, it, it's best to break this down into X and Y components. And the Y component is going to be F T times the sine of that angle right there. And then the distance is going to be, well, it's going to be five meters, but I was looking for a reason to uh, uh, to write, uh, so something to write out as a symbol. So I decided to go OB as part of that. And then, um, and that's negative because it's going clockwise about that point. And then uh, this guy right here, he's going counterclockwise, so he's positive. And so I had M mass times gravity at the center. And then I'm just going from the uh, from the center of gravity to right here. So I'm saying that distance right there. Is that what I was, uh, what you're referring to? Okay. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, um, back over onto here, we said this is one fifth, which is 0.2 uh, radians per second squared. So we can stick that back in there. So we have all the numbers that we need. So we take the sine of 30 and this LOB5, and we said the whole thing was 1,009.81, and the length in between right there, that was going to be, uh, remember, uh, 3.5 minus 2, so that's still the uh, 1.5, I think. And I think we got everything else. Uh, we get the 6,333 from up here, and we got uh, all a point two uh, from right that. So um, I think did I mess up anything? Did I mess up anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I got everything right. And if I work through that, I'm going to find out that my FT is 6,393 newtons. So that was like part A of the thing. 
And so now if I, um, I could still use this free body diagram uh, right here. Um, one thing I might want to be careful of when I'm doing the sum of the forces in the y direction, now I need to uh, have the acceleration in the y direction, which I didn't say before. So the acceleration at the center right there is going to be equal to that alpha times um, that distance again, that LOG. Right, so now it's going to be 0.2 times 1.5. Is that true? Yes. So I'm going to get 0.3 meters per second squared. So now if I go the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction, which is positive, uh, I have to take the cable. So uh, I'm going to take 6,393 times the sine of 30. Um, I also have to have the gravity coming down. It's working against me. So he's going to go minus 1,000 times 9.81. And then I'm going to have this reaction of plus Roy. And I'm going to be equal to... And this is accelerating upwards, so it's positive 1,000 times 0.3, because that is the acceleration in the y direction, right? The uh, AG is going up. So we can find out that Roy is equal to uh, 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 words 6,000. 914 newtons coming upwards and then some of the forces in the x direction now we want to double check as we're looking through the thing did they say it was spinning i think it starts from rest right um let's see it's yeah begins to pull up starting at rest so because there's no omega taking place, there's no acceleration. So there's no acceleration in the X direction. But if there was, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe this drawbridge started down that way and it's sweeping up, right? So it, uh, it, it, it has a, a, a angular velocity. Then it would have a, um, a, a, a normal acceleration. So there would be something in the X direction, but there's nothing. So it's zero. So all we're really dealing with is the um, the force this direction. So this one must be going in that direction. But I already drew it as positive, so we might as well keep it. So that's 6,393 times the cosine of 30 plus R um, rocks. And there's no other forces in the X direction, and there's no acceleration in the X direction. So for the rocks, the box of rocks, we get negative 5,536 newtons. So let's rewrite it out so we can draw an arrow next to it and be correct. And we'll say that it's that a ways. All right, so they're Newton's second law. Well, maybe it's a little basic. I think this. I think this. This problem actually came from a quiz, maybe, or I said it was uh, 2016. I guess I did use it on uh, an exam. Might not have been a final exam. I don't know. Why do you need two separate accelerations? What when you when do you know when to use two? Why did I use two separate accelerations? I'm trying to, uh, can you a, a, a explain what you mean by two separate accelerations? I'm sorry. Maybe, maybe you mean the fact that they told us the acceleration here, right? They, took, they happened to know, I don't know, we had maybe an accelerometer or something. Somehow we magically knew the acceleration right, that was starting right here. But the, the thing we have to do when we're using a free body diagram and, and, and we're, 
We're, we we got to remember the acceleration when it comes to translation needs to be at the center of gravity, right? So we had to, uh, we, 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 I found out the angular acceleration based on that known acceleration at B. So then when I got, went over to here, um, I, uh, uh, when I went down to get to the summation of forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration, this thing for a rigid body has to be at the center of gravity. So I, knowing that angular uh, acceleration, I was able to get what the acceleration was right here, right? If you think about it right here, it kind of makes sense. If the acceleration this way is one that we're skipping over to here, then it would be less right here right so the acceleration is one one meter per second squared we get over to here at the actual center of mass of the thing and it's only 0.3 uh meters per second squared does that answer the question maybe okay cool uh i had a, another problem right right here um it's worth looking at uh, another newton's second law one i think it's uh because so many of them are pinned problems here's one that i always liked um this is out of the back of my book um i don't think i actually have this one solved so this is actually in my my chapter 25 uh where i just put up some old problems so i think this one was a quiz at one point um so uh what happens here is uh we have uh two known forces taking place lifting up this uh big beam right here with that weighs 200 pounds right and somebody's lifting up with a force of 250 pounds and somebody else is lifting up at a force of 150 pounds like so you know that they're it's got to accelerate right if uh you know if we if we picked it up with uh, each of us picked it up with 100 pounds worth of force, we can move it really, really slowly so it wouldn't accelerate, right? We could if we were both. But if we if the thing accelerates, we got to use more force than 100 pounds on each end. And so somebody they're going like a little crazy, 250 and 150, right? And one of them's at an angle a little bit. So now, now, not only is the thing going to lift up, it's going to rotate. It's going to have an angular acceleration to it. And so we want to figure it out. So it's sort of like a, it's a pretty basic kind of question, although I don't know, basic makes it sound easy. No question is easy if you don't know how to solve it. They all seem difficult until you start to get that mindset of picking the thing apart applying what you know and letting that light bulb go and when that make when that thing oh what that feels good when that happens right when that light bulb goes bing and all of a sudden you know how to do the problem ah it's golden and you get better at it and you might even enjoy it and you might even like become a little addictive and you just want more and more success because you just it, it just feels so good to have that success and you have you've got a lot of confidence people on the street look at you with admiration uh birds are singing it's a it's a joyous thing um so much uh, so much more that light bulb oh it, it makes us all happy there's a the light bulb you know just thinking about it happy thoughts um, so this thing weighs 200 pounds and um, FA is 250 at theta 65 degrees, FB is 150 pounds and they're just straight upwards and we want to find um, the acceleration of A. Okay, so uh, we're gonna actually have to do a little bit of acceleration analysis when we get to the end. So what we could do uh, for this right here is take the FBD and the IBD. Which as I had reminded students in my class 
represents points, drawing points. Oh, man, you, you, you draw that and you just made some points. Oh, then I'll fully label this thing. You can even more points right there. And uh, I guess I could keep putting in things uh, there, FA. And then we also want to have the weight of the thing. Weight A, B. Um, sure. And we're going to pretend like the thing just floated. So there is no normal force uh, going on right here. And we just, boom, it started, started lifting. Um, so we have the acceleration of uh, this right here, the acceleration um, a, of the center of gravity in the y direction. Um, I kind of know from this right here that the x direction has to accelerate in that direction. And I don't know necessarily, I, I, I guess I can, I can kind of guess which direction, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, guess this right here. That that's going to be my uh, angular uh, acceleration direction. I think that's fair to say. I hope I didn't mess myself up. So um, we can start in any order here, but let's take the some of the moments about the center of gravity. That's supposed to be an M. It's going to be equal to uh, the sum of the effective moments. And uh, with the fact that we're doing it about the center, we take a look and there's no masses, anything, mass times acceleration. So in this case, once again, the effective moment is going to be uh, that right there. It's a really good idea if we, uh, unless there's some really good reason like having a, a pin or something, is to take it when you can about the center of gravity. There's sometimes there could be some strategy uh, that we, we might want to employ where we don't, but that's a good idea. So uh, we start off right here, um, looking at this, and I can see that this is going to cause a moment that's uh, clockwise. And FA, I'm just going to use numbers instead of symbols, um, is 250. And it's only going to be the vertical component, so it's going to be the sine of 65. And it's going to the, the moment arm of the thing is half the length. So we'll go six feet. The whole thing is 12 feet, if you recall. And then we have the same thing going on right here. We have, but this one is going to be directly upwards and is going counterclockwise. It's positive, And we know that happens to be 150 pounds times six. And that's going to be equal to um, I alpha. Now, I should maybe I should get the I somewhere up above. So let me figure out I is going to be, once again, 1 12th, but we use that a lot, ML squared. Got to be careful because these are in United States of America units. Woohoo! America! But we need to divide by 32.2 to get it into slugs. And this thing is 12 feet long. So I don't have the um, uh, solution right now to this anywhere, so we, we're just going to have to take it on faith that we get the right answer. <laughs> I don't even think I have it here. Um, so that's uh, 144 times 200 divided by 32.2 and then divided by 12. So that's 74.53 kilogram meter squared. Um, okay, so uh, there's there you go. There's the 74.5. Uh, I just look at me, dummy. I got a neighbor that's like yelling right now. And he needs to yell on the phone. I don't know. Somebody ain't. It must be a bad person. That's what it must be. They're talking to a bad person. So looking at this right here, I get an alpha, right? So that's all I needed for my alpha. My alpha. Um, take 65, take the sine of it, times 6, times 250, all right, and but then we get 150, and times 6, and that one is subtracting from there. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to get an, end up getting a negative number, and we divide that thing through... And I get a negative 6.164 uh, 
uh, radians per second squared. So there you go. Interesting. So now let's also find out the sum of the forces in the y direction is mass times acceleration in the y direction. So that's going to be um, 250 times the sine of 65. I'm about to turn a fan on because he's really loud. It, you guys might not be able to hear it, but it is really annoying. He is, I, I think because he's calling someone over into another country. And so uh, it, it, when you do that, you need to really raise your voice apparently. Uh, let's see, Dude, what was there? It says, I, yeah, I can hear it, yeah, no. But um, let's see, what am I doing here? Uh, I'm lost, I lost, I lost my train of thought. No, back on the train, back on the thought train. Um, we call it AGY maybe, yeah, I called it AGY. So we could find AGY is, but I'm, I'm really, really sensitive to, to like salads. I, I get, yeah. Just chill dog. That's what I should say to myself. That would, that's what I would say if I was talking to myself. Sometimes it does feel like I'm talking to myself. I really do not like these online things. Can't make eye contact. Just seems like just there doing it by myself. Okay, I'm trying to remember if I, I was uh, blabbering on, but I think I got that right. 60.63 feet per second squared, right? And then uh, lastly, let's take um, some of the forces in the X direction is mass times acceleration in the X direction. And the only thing we have now is in the negative 250 times the cosine of 65. And there's a, you know, you know, there's a good likelihood as a student, as you're going through there, that you might miss out on that X direction, right? That you, you just would. So it's a, it's a good thing to, uh, to, to, to not get into autopilot and to just look carefully. Oh, and by the way, I did draw this in the negative direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put it negative right here. Actually, probably should put it in negative in front of that. That's uh, AGX. And so I probably have to go to another piece of paper. But that doesn't hurt anything, right, to go to more paper. That's fine. Uh, 250 and 65 cosine times and 322 times 200 divided uh, I get a 17.01 feet per second squared. Okay, remember we keep the keep the eye on the prize. We needed the acceleration of a, which is right there. We know the acceleration now here at the center of this thing. So we can do not a difficult but still an acceleration analysis. All right, so. Um, let's just, let's remember how we do these things, right? That we methodically pick through, think, thinking through a problem with the diagrams. We want to find the acceleration of A. We know the acceleration of G. We're going to take the acceleration of A with respect to G is going to be our means of doing this. So, we know this acceleration is that way and this way, but we want to find this one and that one right there, right? So this is the acceleration of A in the Y direction, acceleration of A in the X direction, acceleration of G in the X direction, acceleration of G in the Y direction. So because we know this one, we want to put it at both spots. And since we're using this one as the reference, we pin it there. And uh, as you'll recall, we got a negative number here. So we got this wrong. So this is actually going clockwise. So we will have a clockwise angular velocity here. So that means that the relative uh, uh, velocity of A with respect to G is this one right here. 
And uh, so when we go into the Y direction, and remember, that it, it's also, it's starting from rest, right? So there is no normal acceleration, which would show up right here, right? If there was one, right, uh, uh, they would be pointing towards this right here, but there's no in this case. And I should probably have labeled the rest of these things right here. This is e, G and this is A, G, Y right there, right? So, but anyway, in the Y direction, we want to get the acceleration of A in the Y direction, and that's going to be equal to the acceleration of G in the Y direction. So we go ahead and write that down. That is 60.63 is what we previously found. And so that's what this from this, and then we over here, once again, we only have the tangential one, and we know that that's gonna be this uh, times uh, L over two, right? So uh, it's gonna be plus the 6.164 uh, times the length uh, over two is six. So we get ourselves and times six and adding, and we get 97.62 feet per second squared. And then in the x direction, we don't even really need to do this, but we could see that we have, oh, look. A, A, X is equal to negative, you know, right here. There's nothing going on over here, so it's all going to be, they're just going to be equal to each other. It's going to be 17.01 feet per second squared, right? Equal to it. So um, the way that the problem was phrased is they wanted to find um, this as a magnitude and direction, right? So we can get the magnitude is the square root of, 97.62 squared plus 17.01 squared equals uh, 99 problems feet won't complete that sentence and Uh, this mostly up. Ninety-seven point six two, seventeen point zero one, and so we get eighty point one two degrees. So an answer. Give ourselves a little bit of room. Ninety-nine point one feet per second squared and it's going to the left and up so that quadrant 80.1 degrees Kaboom. and it kind of makes sense when you think about it that that's going to accelerate that that's going to accelerate faster than that because this got it's got more it, it was it, some some of the unknown was about the, the angle though right because like we'd have a, a steep angle like this right here and that's just gonna that so so that the magnitude of this might have been smaller actually than that if that angle was steep enough. Of course, he, you know, whoever's pulling up this side is really annoying this guy over here because it's making that thing go up there. Anyway. Uh, I thought it was a good Newton's second law problem because it started out like seeming like it was gonna be eh, that's gonna be easy to do, but there's a little bit more to it, you know. But uh, you work through the thing and you think meticulously through the part and it starts to become clear. Can we do work energy next? Absolutely. Let's do work energy problem next. Um, let's see. Do I have some kind of crazy thing? Uh, there is. Let's see. This is my book, by the way. I was in a beautiful thing with my man, Newt Dog. Here's a work energy problem. There's some work energy problems. Let's, let's do some work energy problems from the back. Uh, there was a work energy problem right there where we said, uh, is that one? I think it's one. For B24. Here you go. All right, so 
um, the problem we have is uh, a block uh, A is 20 kilograms. Let me write some of this stuff down here. So we got this MA is equal to 20 kilograms on the slope of 20 degrees. Um, it's connected. Oh, no. Okay. So, uh, so that's block A. Block C is 40 kilograms. Um, and there's also, uh, oh, there's the, the pulley has a 60 kilograms. It's a very a large pulley with a radius of 0.25 meters. And we're going to treat it like a disc. And it's got a spring uh, coefficient of 2,000 newtons per meter. Continuing story. Um, it's got a pre-stretch uh, del of uh, 0 0.02 meters. And there's a coefficient of friction. What a jerk, man, making all these damn things. Um, we want to find the tension in newtons uh, between the cable. So we want to, what we're trying to do is we find Ft. Um, this got we got to be specific uh, between the mass A. Um, so between the uh, um, A and B. Okay. And so here is a lovely picture uh, of the thing. Right there. Okay, so here's the here's our situation. So let's kind of redraw this thing out there. Uh, I'll draw it real quick. We're gonna find a purpose for uh, some doohickey like this. Like, why would anybody have this thing? It's got to be a reason to do it. To make a dynamics problem. That's the only reason I can think of. C, B, and A, and here is this. Okay, so my goal in uh, making this was to try to use as much of the stuff as we possibly could. And I believe it's starting at rest. Um, and did I give a, I must have given a, like a, a, a parameter that it had to move. Otherwise, it's kind of stupid. Um, This is actually, um, um, well, this doesn't make any sense. Wait a minute. I'm just hoping this Oh, boy. Both are released from rest and begin to move. Okay. They both begin to move. And, um, and it's, uh, 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 they're released from rest and they begin to move. And the thing is stretched at 0 0.012. Um, I, I'm a little confused by the problem, and I wrote it by an extensible cable first minute here and treat both. Both are at least from rest to begin to move. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, this actually be uh, uh, you need you need to have had some movement here. So let's um, invent uh, some movement. So like let's say the thing has moved uh, C has moved one meter. So so let's say um, af let's find the tension after. Yeah, I know. I guess you can choose one based on the final practice problems. You're right. I have no idea what I was thinking when I wrote this uh, uh, problem out here. Uh, I think I left out a sentence or something. After C moves one meter. Okay. So this is the pre-stretch. Uh, now, the, one, one problem I have actually is I could actually have made this so that it actually goes in the wrong direction. So maybe I should make it half a meter here maybe just to be more cautious because the spring thing could be so much that like this thing can't move beyond that position it's a dangerous to make up a problem on the fly uh, uh, like that when it have a, a spring in there i have been burned before so if i have to take the square root of a negative number first off i'm going to curse um and then the next thing that's going to happen is um anyway i made a problem that was too difficult to do not not your typical exam problem 
I don't think uh, uh, I, may, I might need to look this up somewhere and figure out where where I got it from, where, where where I first created it. It's probably one of those extra exam problems that I never actually used. Um, so anytime we're doing this kind of a problem, it's a good idea to write out our work energy uh, equation. And I start out with KE1. And we're starting from rest, so E0. I start with my potential energy at 1. OK, so this is going to be the datum. And that's going to be at state 2. So right here, we're going to have some change in potential energy. So we go MC um, G times uh, uh, that delta Y that the thing has moved. But this one will also move right here, right? But only by the way of, it'll have the same distance that has moved this way, but it has gone up a slope by way of the sign of this right here. So uh, we want MA and have uh, G delta, we we'll call it delta Y because what we're calling that delta Y, but really this delta S is going to be equal to delta Y and then times the sine of theta. But then we also have to have, because it's pre-stretched, it's already stretched a little bit right here. So it's K del squared. So lots of stuff uh, to put in there. Um, 40... 9.81 delta y i just said invented was 0.5 plus um there's 20 um 9.81 it's going to move 0.5 that i just invented sine of 20 degrees because we said it was 20 we said this was 20 degrees right in there and lastly one half 2000 which is a large number but fortunately this is a pretty small number um so point zero let's start with that one two thousand could have just uh, so so that's pretty small right there actually i don't trust it now i'll just do it again yes yeah, so that's just a point four is all we got right there so on uh, 9.81, so that amount was 33.55, so that's a lot more than that. So that'd be more now, wouldn't it? 9.81 times 0.5 times, of course, this one's a lot more, like 196.2. So we get a potential energy of... 230.2 uh, Newton meters. Now, um, now we have the U from one to two. We have friction going on. Now, if we have friction going on, it's a good idea uh, to do our FBD and our IBD over to the side with a turned coordinate axis onto the thing. So we have this, we have that, we have this, we have Fn, we got the weight of A, and we have the friction right there that's going on, and we have the, we know the acceleration, the mass of A times the acceleration of A. We also, um, just for completeness, put on these right here, we'd have like the force of the spring and the force of the tension. We might actually be able to use this thing later this FBD and this IBD because it's actually useful to us. Um, it's kind of universal, didn't have to be in that particular position. Um, so anyway, um, yeah. So if the only thing we wanted to get was the tension uh, that, that was in there, that's, I think there's actually, hmm, I think it's actually still in the Newton second law that we would end up using into the thing now that I'm thinking about it. But let me, uh, let me just finish off with this, uh, continue with where I was going. Um, in the Y prime direction, we know that's going to be zero because it can't, 
just can't move in that direction. So it's going to be a negative, uh, that's a 20 kilograms, 9.81, um, and that's going to be the cosine of 20 degrees plus Fn equals zero. So Fn is uh, going to be uh, this right here. Um, okay. And uh, still, you know, I'm, I'm distracted by thinking about what I have to do in the next um, part of the problem. And I think I might have like painted myself into a corner, but let's just take it on faith that we're going to be able to do it. All right. There is a whole lot of aspect of solving these problems that is just, I know how to solve problems. And then you, you solve them, right? Just believe that you can do it. Um, so take that friction, coefficient friction uh, was 0 0.2184.4. So 0.2 times that. Oh, why did you just go away? You just went away. Why did you go? 0.2 times. So we get uh, 36.87 newtons. So when we get to this guy, we know it's going to be the friction times the uh, distance that this thing has moved. And we know that that's going to be 36.87. And the distance, though, is going to be 0 0.5. Uh, but now that distance is the cosine. I think it's the cosine. Anybody agree, disagree? I think it's the, it should be the cosine, right? No, it should be the full distance. Yeah. If this thing goes down, this thing slides. That's a dummy. Why didn't you why why didn't you correct me? All right, so negative uh, eighteen point four four uh, newton meters. All right, so we probably should have asked what the speed of the thing was after it has moved right there. I don't know if it's gonna help us any to have done any of this, but that's okay. We're gonna still keep doing it we'll show them all right <clears throat> so uh when it comes to uh the kinetic energy it's all the kinetic energy so it's this kinetic energy and this kinetic energy and this rotational kinetic energy so we need to have the i of the disc and it's a disc so that's one half m r squared one half and the disc is a 60 kilogram thing and its radius is 0.25. So 0.25 squared times 60 divided by 2 is 1.875 kilogram meter squared. So um, here, well, let's, let's do that one first. Omega squared. And oh, by the way, omega... Um, uh, this is omega 2. Omega 2 is going to be equal to the velocity, and these two velocities are going to be equal to each other, so we'll just call them both velocity 2, and that's going to be rb right there, right? So we'll just remember that one we'll go to put that into there, that, the, that these, uh, this velocity and this velocity and this angular velocity, they all have, they're all related to each other so that we can uh, switch them in. Um, plus 1 half m a v a 2 squared right which is just v 2 squared plus one half m c v c 2 squared and so we say one half uh 1.875 let me go v 2 divided by 0.25 squared plus one half m a which is 20 v2 squared i'm just going to use v2 instead because they're all the same 
and then this guy right here is 40 mv2 squared so I would end up with uh, let me take that 0.25 um, and square them and multiply them by that and divide by 2 so that actually right here this becomes 15 v2 squared and then this is 10 so we're adding that and then this is 20 so it ends up being 45 v2 squared and then lastly uh, we want to remember although we had the datum oh I messed something up let me see I messed something up the potential energy here is larger than there potential energy here is larger than there okay so this is this should be the datum for this guy so this boom right there was incorrect that should be down here potential energy too I should not have done that my mistake at least I remembered I recognized it so it, that does not belong right there this thing increases in potential energy when it goes up the slope so we want to uh, say M a G Delta Y sine theta how would you guys let me do that and then plus one half uh, k del 2 squared this was del 1 squared so well fortunately here I actually calculated the thing out separately right and then plus one half uh, 2000 now here's the one where it's a little this is a little tricky because that's going to move up 0.5 but it already had a preload of 0 0.02 I say it's tricky because it, if I put too large of a number it could be a wicked large and it could cause the whole thing to uh, give me trouble and then I ended up taking a square root of a negative number and because it was impossible to, to do 5 2 squared times 2000 divided by 2 okay I think it's not terribly large 270.4 compared to some of these other things I need to recalculate this right here uh, and this guy we already had him as 33.55 so we can add that 33.55 add them together so this is 303.95 newton meters see it's, it's almost too large of a number it is too large of a number yep see i just i just messed myself up by taking i took this as to be too large of a thing and that's going to cause uh it's going to cause the whole thing to blow up it's the little things that kill you sometimes right it's just that you it's because i made this spring constant too large uh arg. that's why you got to really work through when you're writing one of these problems you gotta make sure you don't screw the thing up how could it be so stupid well it just uh it just comes natural it's 196.2 yeah so we have to uh, um this problem just blew up i'm sorry folks uh don't know what to tell you don't buy that book that's for sure that's what you should learn from that it's a, it's a useless book all right so um, but I'll continue here to show you what what went wrong uh, with the problem and even with the, there's a lot of things went wrong with this problem um, working through all this you could see that we have zero plus our 196.6 um plus well plus but it's a minus 18.44 and then uh equals 4500 v2 squared and then um plus our 303.95 so you see what's going to happen right here I'm going to bring this over to the side and this is going to be negative over here and then I have to take the square root of it and you just can't do that 
So it was a kitchen sink problem. I'm gonna figure out uh, uh, what I had for the original numbers, but this is what this this is really the core of what messed me up right here. Is I made this too large, that became too large, so this thing can't even actually make it down to that right here, down to that level. The problem with trying to do a Newton's second law uh, thing with this is that the spring tension right here is going to mess the thing up. So this is really a Newton's second law problem if you want to know what the tension is individually. Um, but I don't think you can actually uh, get that uh, uh, from this uh, uh, right here. So anyway, let's pick out another problem uh, to do. And uh, let's, let's just pretend that never happened. Thank goodness this isn't being recorded. So for posterity, let's not share this one. Let's not, let's not tell anyone. All right, let's find another problem. Um, so anybody have another suggestion, or maybe we should try to cleanse our palate with uh, a problem um, uh, that we can uh, that we can solve. Um, here's that problem right there. It says the work energy. Here is that problem: the coefficient of friction between the block and slope. Find the tension. Is here. See, see that right there? It's it's all screwed up. Why didn't I like pick up on that? I don't know why. All right, so uh, uh, do you want to do a, an acceleration problem, maybe? Mm, okay. Impulse or acceleration? Let's see. Um, I was kind of already thinking of doing... Uh, this was an instantaneous center rotation right here. An ICR problem. We can do impulse first. Okay, let's do an, another impulse first. Let's do uh, this impulse right here. Let's say uh, that we have a thin disk of mass 1.5 kilograms and radius of three, cent three centimeters. What are you doing? Um, is moving to the right on a smooth horizontal plane. Okay, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at this from above. We should know that. Um, with a velocity of three meters per second when it strikes at right angles, a slender bar that's pinned um, at the opposite end, and the bar has a mass of 0.8 kilograms, and it's got a length of 30 centimeters uh, that has an initial angular velocity of uh, two radians per second clockwise. If the coefficient of restitution is 0.9, all right, so they ask us for a bunch of things, but basically we want to find out what the uh, the disk's velocity is afterwards and the um, what the uh, rod's angular velocity is going to be afterwards. So uh, rod, write this thing out. This thing has a omega one of two radians per second before impact. The disk is uh, three meters per second, and the mass. Let's see. We'll call this guy. This guy's a. Um, I'm going to call this point B right here, and I'm going to call this guy C right in there at that spot. And uh, uh, things I want to know here: the disk is 1.5 kilograms. Um, we don't care what the radius is. Why would you care what the radius is? Okay, we'll put that the radius is three centimeters. Uh, anybody remember that? Is that 0 0.03 meters? I'm not writing down centimeters. I don't like centimeters. They confuse me. Um, and VA is three meters per second. Okay, good. And then uh, the mass of BC of the whole thing is 0.8 kilograms, not a lot, and its length of BC is 30, so that's 0.3 meters, and we already know that the omega-1 is this, and the coefficient of restitution is 0.9. Okay. And on the diagram on the right, show the normal and tangential uh, directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And determine the magnitude and tangential velocity of the disks and the bar after the collision. Sure, sure, sure. Determine the magnitude of the, the direction of the velocity of the disk. Disk. 
disk. Seems like it repeated the same thing. There doesn't seem any difference between B and C. And B. Determine the magnitude of the tangential velocity of the disk. Uh, I think it, it's going to be zero. It's, uh, why are you being so weird? Okay. Mm, oh, Alicia, why do you do these things? Okay, cool. All right. So anyway, um, I think we just do the impulse momentum diagram. Sure. So we go before plus collision kapow. It's going to be equal to uh, the stuff after, right? So it's an impulse. And this is after. So I'm going to call that omega 2. And this right here, this thing is already moving with omega 1. And this is M A 1. V A one and this is M A V A two. I guess I'll call this thing um, is we're gonna make this thing about C. Right. So we don't have to do this the center of thing. Because once I like it when I you when you use when you can use the pin, use the pin. So we'll find uh, uh, not var. Var means it's about the center of gravity, and this one's not gonna be. We're going to take 1 12th ML BC squared BC plus uh, MBC over L over 3 BC squared. By the way, we happen to know that over 3, over 2. Jeez. I was thinking, you know, we could do the shortcut. We actually know the shortcut that that's going to be 1 third, right? But let's do it anyway. 1 12th, um, 0 0.8, uh, 0.3 squared plus 0 0.8, 0 0.3 over 2 squared. So we should get uh, 0.3 squared, 0.8 times 12 divided. Yeah, it's going to be a small number. 0.3 divided by 2, square it. 0.8 times, add them together, still a pretty small number, 2.400 E minus 2 kilogram meter squared. Did she, she kept it about B. Um, okay. So I'm I'm gonna need to do a little kinematics at some point, but I I, I can um, I took care of this uh, ahead of time. So we said um, we have the mass of this, and um, we want to make sure that we you know we're we're this is what we're saying. We have the conservation of uh, angular momentum about c uh, because we had, we could tell that everything is going to. Uh, either cancel out or be equal and opposite right there. So we have the conservation of angular momentum. And um, I guess I'll stick with counterclockwise as positive, but everything is, uh, in this case, is actually um, uh, clockwise. You have to include mass of the bar to right. Um, yes and no. Uh, we kind of already are doing that right there right because we're we're by, by way of using this right here i can uh i can ignore it. this 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 one is pinned right as opposed to uh one of the previous problems that we looked at where we had uh the thing was just f f uh, lying there in this case um uh, the problem, as they have it stated, has has a pin right there, and that allows us to use uh, um, the the I, you know, to to, to use the the uh, I about C instead. So when we go to uh, do this right here, we could just look at it and go negative M A V A one times the length right there, because we're going to take it about C. 
and this is a BC, and then plus IC omega 1, and that's going to be equal to after the fact, we're going to assume that they're all go, still keep going in that direction. And then this, uh, when I, I was about to write plus, but it's still minus. Everybody's minus. So we can get rid of that. Or we could have just, you know, said, okay, just this one time we'll make uh, clockwise. Forgot about that one, Tim. But so we can just go like, all right, all of them are. All of them are positive. That's fine. Um, so we have uh, the mass of the ball is 1.5 or disc or whatever you have it. And uh, VA was starts out at three, and the length is 0.3. And now we have our uh, thing of 2.4 e minus two, and it starts off with a radians per second of two, and it's going to be equal to let's see. We get, uh, this is 1.5, and we don't know VA2 yet. Um, this is 0.3. This is our 2.4 E minus 2, but we have omega 2. So um, throwing a bunch of numbers at there, 1.5, 3.3 times, that becomes 1.3 here. Um, this isn't a whole lot. We're just multiplying it by two. So we can add them together and we get 1.398 is equal to, and 1.5 times 0.3 is 0.45 VA2. And then we know that we have this right here. So this is like equation one uh, for us right here. Okay, so we have a relationship uh, right here. What we would like to do with these two unknowns, though, is we'd like to use the coefficient of restitution to try to figure out what the relationship is. Now, you remember that the coefficient of restitution has to be about the point of the contact right here. So we're going to call that point B that's here. So this is going to be A and that's B, right, right next to each other. And we can relate what omega, what the velocity of B is with omega. Oh, I just heard myself repeat the echo of my own voice. It was really weird, nerve wracking. Okay. Um, but let's uh, write, write out the co finish out the coefficient of restitution. Is going to be the velocity of, uh, let's say, uh, B2 minus velocity of A2, right? So that's afterwards. And we're going to make sure we flip which one we're doing when it's on the denominator, right? So it's going to be A1 minus V uh, B1 right in there. Um, wish I had another nice clean spot to uh, to do this right here because I'm going to shove it down in there. I guess maybe I'll write it here. Um, the velocity of B1 was just going to be omega 1 times LBC, right? So we were already given that. Um, it was going at 2 radians per second, and the length was 0.3. So that's 0.6 uh, meters per second the thing was traveling at, right? So we're going to put that in for down here. Uh, we also, substituting back into here, we know that we have VB2 is omega 2 times LBC. So I'll just bring this back over here. That's going to be 0.3 omega 2. So put this back into place. We got 0.9 times this minus this. And A was going at 3 meters per second. And we're going to subtract out 0.6 meters per second. It's going to be equal to B2, which is 0.3 times omega 2 minus VA2. So 3 minus 0.6, could do that in my head, but I didn't, times 0.9. And so we get 2.16 uh, 
is equal to 0.3 omega 2 minus VA2. And that's going to be our second equation. So we can shove this one back into this one. And in either order that we want to do, it looks to me like it's going to be easiest to write out that VA2 is equal to um, uh, 0.3 omega 2 minus 2.16. I did that right. And that goes over here and that comes back over there. Right. Sub him back up into here. Fresh paper and um, putting him back up into place. 1.398 is equal to 0.45 and 0.3 Omega 2 minus 2.16 and plus 2.4 E minus 2 Omega 2. All right, so um, that means we're going to take 0.45, multiply them by that, and then bring him back over this way and going to add them to that. Sounds good to me. All right. I said I was going to do it, and then I just uh, looking at the number. I'm like, mm, did I do it? Okay, yeah. And now I'm going to take 0.45, multiply it by 0.3, and I'm going to add it to my 2.4 uh, E2 right here. So it doesn't seem like it's going to make a big difference. And it made a little bit of a difference, right? And so now I can divide what I got there by this. Boom. Wow, my omega really increased. That seems like it's kind of a crazy amount. I'm not feeling comfortable with that. All right, let's see what it does. Omega 2 is 14.91. Of course, you guys have access to the uh, solution as well, so you can see how, how bad far off I am. Nope, nope, that's what, uh, that's the correct answer. Radians per second, okay. And then um, we could go back and stick it in for the this equation right here. Make it the easiest. VA2 is 0.3 times our 14.91 minus our 2.16. And so 0.3 times that, 2.16 minus it. Um, so the thing is barely slowed down, right? It started out with three meters per second, and now it is uh, uh, going at this right here, 2.312 meters per second, which is what they said the thing was going to be, right? So this is that way, and that is that way, and sure enough. All right. I'm going to do an Excel. Okay, we're at the uh, two-hour mark, but we can keep on going. I don't mind. You might mind. You won't hurt my feelings if you have something else to do. It'll go away. I do uh, feel a bit of shame for having messed up that uh, one problem. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Where's it going? I, see, I heard a bloop. I'm trying to manage all these things at the same time. Unfortunately, I have to go. I'm sorry to hear that, Jamie. Um, good, to, good to have you, and uh, you're welcome. And have a uh, have a great summer if you're if you're leaving. Okay, Rachel, you too. Um, hope uh, hope this helped. Uh, make sure you work through some practice problems and um, get uh, get all set to uh, to go. Yeah, well, that's what we aim to do. Try to be helpful. Got a bunch of pieces of paper here in front of me, and I'm trying to manage them. So you hear a lot of rustling going on. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where that problem came from. Mm -hmm. All right, so we still got some patrons. We uh, we still go ready to go. We went to the uh, uh, are we uh, we're all burned out. Yeah, George, Jody, and Nathaniel. Anybody, are you guys uh, still on board for doing some more? 
because I'm pretty tired. Okay, good. Okay, cool. Let's do uh, an acceleration problem because um, those are those are tough, and uh, I said that I wanted some um, wanted wanted to, to see some on the. Uh, oh, let's see here. I'm looking at my pieces of paper here and trying to keep organized. All right, so let's uh, pick one out. I, th I might have one in my uh, packet here. Oh, excuse me. I had one here, so I called it not another acceleration problem. Here you go. So at the instant shown, slider B is traveling to the right with a velocity and acceleration shown. Boom, right here. Determine the angular velocity of AB using the method of instantaneous center of rotation, right? And then determine the angular uh, velocity of the wheel, and then determine the angular acceleration of the wheel at this instant, right here. Okay. These are tough problems. And this might be too long of a problem to, uh, to do in, in an exam, by the way. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. That was not my best effort right there. Just going to say that. I've done better. That's what I'm saying. Um, so this guy right there is traveling at six inches per second and accelerating here at three inches per second squared. And this length is 20 inches. And I'm actually thinking at this instance that, that this might be a trick question. This first part of this question right here might be a trick. Hmm. It feels like it's going to be a trick to me. Because if you want to know, if you want to look at this thing, right, where, what's, take the disk by itself, right? There's the velocity of the thing right there. The velocity of, this is A. And this is B, okay. The velocity of A is in that direction. But then look at this right here. Let's take a, let, let's take a look at this uh, bar. That means the velocity is here, but then the velocity is right here. So what does that tell you? All right. Are you with me? Do you agree? Do you see why? Okay, cool. Good. Um, I could really use some coffee. I should have taken a break at some point. Um, mm -hmm. There's my good friend Sean. His, his, uh, this is his problem. I see his hand right. Okay, so um, let's get the acceleration, though, at this moment right here. So we have the velocity uh, here is um, also going to be equal to six uh, inches per second. And therefore, the angular velocity of this is going to be uh, with the radius. I didn't write down the radius was five inches. So that's going to be VA over RA or six divided by five. And so if you have six divided by uh, five onto the thing, it's going to be like 1.2, right? 1.2 radians per second. So we're also going to have the, I, I meant to, I drew that little line right there. I meant to draw this little line like this right here. So the acceleration at A is entirely in the normal direction and it's going to be omega squared r let's omega a r the a right there call it omega a whatever uh so that ends up 1.2 squared times five or uh so 1.2 squared that's 7.2 uh, uh, inches per second squared. 
And okay, so now we do, um, oh, now we can do our acceleration analysis uh, onto the thing. And um, so for right here, we know this acceleration. Is uh, so we call this a b. We also know a part of this acceleration right there, right? We know that it's accelerating uh, uh, downward uh, um, right there. Just want to double check on something. Hmm. Yes. All right, so this is, uh, I, I don't like the way that he wrote that out right here, but there's the, so it, it could also, um, yeah, we don't know that this is uh, got a, we don't, we don't know what this thing's angular, we, th this thing will also have, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I misstated something. This is the uh, uh, normal component right here. This can also have a tangential component up here onto this wheel. We don't know the acceleration of the wheel. It isn't necessarily rotating at a constant and probably isn't. But we do know this right here. And I'm going to call this, we're going to change this to a Y right there. That's this. But there can be an acceleration at a X that we don't know this yet. We do know this value. We don't know that value yet. Um, but we do know this value entirely. So we're going to put that guy there. And we're going to pin this and let's, this plus sign is in my way, so I'm going to move them a little bit. Let's assume this alpha AB is positive, right, or is in this direction. That means that uh, that right there is the acceleration of A with respect to B in the tangential direction. This is the acceleration of A with respect to B in the normal direction, but it gets to be equal to zero because of this, right? That's like, that's one of the only redeeming qualities of this uh, problem is that we, uh, <laughs> we, we got to make that statement. Um, there's something else I think we were kind of missing from the original problem. I'm not sure they told us, or maybe we could tell from the geometry. Maybe we could tell this from the geometry here that, yeah, this is 20 inches, this is five and five, but that this thing lines up with the base of that. So that this is 20 inches and this is actually 10 inches in diameter right here. And that makes up that triangle because we need that angle right in there that we never got. So that was an aspect right there. So we can uh, figure out what this angle is, theta. I didn't want, it could have even been one of the first things that we might want to have done. So that's a 10 over 20. And we uh, kind of expect this to be degrees, right? This isn't, uh, maybe? No, I don't think that's true. He wrote that down that it was 30 degrees. I think I just saw that. Did you write that out? That was 30 degrees? He might have... No, no, that'd be the sign. That's right. It would be now. Because this is the si this is the hypotenuse, and that's the opposite. So it's the inverse sign, not the cos. He just... Me, me going about, uh, you know, in autopilot sometimes is kind of a dangerous thing. But it is Friday on the day after, like, classes end. There's, like, the last day of classes. That's my excuse anyway. Okay. Um, I'm tired. So uh, uh, right here, this would be my 30 degrees. Like if this is my 30 degrees, that's 30 degrees. Okay. So if I, um, I'm writing out an equation that the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration of A with respect to B tangentially plus acceleration of A with respect to B in the normal direction. 
And because I know what's happening in the vertical direction, in the y direction, I know what this value is. That might be the way uh, uh, to go uh, uh, to to try to solve. Because we need to know what this angular acceleration is going to be. We need this. <clears throat> okay. So uh, what we say here in the y direction, we have a negative uh, 7.2. And uh, looking here, this there's nothing going on here, so it's going to be zero. And then here, we're going to have a negative, that's good, alpha AB times the length of the thing, which is 20. But remember that this is only going to be the component in the vertical direction. So it's going to be the cosine of 30 degrees. And then moving on to this next one, we see that it is fortunately zero. So that allows us to get, so we take 7.2 and divide it by 20 and divide it by the cosine and we get that the angular acceleration is 0.4157 radians per second squared. So if we take it in the x direction now, what we're able to find is uh, uh, the acceleration, and I show it as being positive, so that's fine. Does not necessarily is it positive. I just showed it, showed, showed it, showed it as positive, and then the acceleration of b, which is something that we were given at three, and then uh, we're going to go to this diagram. We see it's in a negative direction, and it's going to be alpha, which we just found, and the distance, but now it's going to be the sine of 30 degrees and there is nothing in the normal direction so let's make sure we indicate that so we're going to get this and so take 20 times that and 30 take the sign of that times the boom 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 and this ends up being 4.156 so we're subtracting from 3 so we get a negative 1.15 seven uh, inches per second squared. Therefore, this thing is actually has a deceleration of, uh, of the disk. Um, I'm just going to call it A right there, right? So we'll find that the acceleration of A in the X direction is actually the acceleration of this tangentially right there of the disk, uh, which is alpha a times r a so uh, we could find it the acceleration of this is going to be a 1.157 divided by 5 which is 0.2314 radians per second squared and that ends up being the answer It's a little challenge, and even then, even still, that you know, you got this was one where they uh, <laughs> they simplified the problem a little bit for us. It was kind of nice of them. I don't know. They simplified the problem by making um, the the thing uh, tra this in full translation. So just gave it made it a little shorter, but not by much. All right, so we got another um, request, another problem that you might like to see. You're ready for this. You got this one covered. We're totally golden on this thing. I should have done a uh, uh, yeah. 
this one bothers me. I don't know why this one's all screwed up. I got to look back and see what I did. If, when 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 did I know that this thing was messed up? It's it's the thing. It's not even being. It's, it's I'm asking for the tension for some reason. I got to write that down. See in my in my in, in in this version of the book. No, I have much to. Uh, no, I have to go. No problem. Uh, um, well, thank you so much. I'm glad that you were here for some of it. Um, yeah, I got to go home too. It's Friday. I got to go uh, get some stuff ready. Have a great weekend. Hey, have a great summer, everybody. And uh, take care. <laughs>